A public institution is expected to show the highest regard for the public good and to be open to public accountability by showcasing its performance. CBI is being increasingly asked to delve into a diverse array of criminal cases beyond its role as an anti-corruption investigative agency. This places a huge responsibility on the CBI to live up to its motto of industry, impartiality and integrity. Courts have been instrumental in strengthening the CBI. Initially, its jurisdiction was primarily focused on cases related to corruption, economic offences and serious crime that cross state borders. For instance, in Andhra Industrial Works versus the Chief Controller of Works, which resulted in a decision of the Supreme Court in 1974, CBI dealt with serious complaints of the Commission of Criminal Offences arising out of the misutilization of materials previously imported under import licenses. India was then under the license Raj as it was called and therefore the nature of crime which was investigated by CBI had a bearing on the regulatory framework under the law. I thought I would begin with this because that would show us in sharp contrast the nature and the evolution of the work of CBI as the economy has progressed, as society has progressed, as societal values have changed. As the years have progressed, the CBI saw a significant expansion in its jurisdiction encompassing a broader spectrum of offences. This widening scope empowered the agency to investigate diverse cases ranging from economic frauds and bank scams to financial irregularities and terrorism related incidents. The legal profession should be happy about it because CBI has provided some new sources of income earning to the members of the bar as well. One noteworthy instance of the CBI's expanded purview occurred in the 1980s when it delved into the investigation of the Bhopal gas tragedy. This catastrophic human tragedy marked by the leakage of the deadly methyl isocinate gas from the Union Carbide Pesticide Plant resulted in thousands of casualties and widespread environmental devastation. A pivotal moment came in 1997 with the judgment of the Supreme Court in Vineet Narayan versus Union of India, popularly known as the Jain Hawala case. This judgment reshaped CBI's institutional framework and laid the groundwork for its transformation into a premier investigative agency. Central to this overhaul was the introduction of a guaranteed tenure for the CBI director, a crucial step towards insulating the agency from external influence and ensuring its autonomy in carrying out its mandate. The ruling also established a distinct directorate of prosecution within the CBI with the goal of improving the efficiency of the agency's prosecutorial duties. This structural reform underscored a commitment to strengthening the CBI's capacity to handle complex legal proceedings and uphold the rule of law. Crucially, the verdict also emphasized the need for the Central Vigilance Commission in ensuring efficient functioning of the CBI. While the government retains accountability for the CBI's operations, the CVC was entrusted with the responsibility of superintendents, introducing a layer of oversight aimed at promoting transparency and accountability. DP Kohli emphasized the importance of detection work to uncover the commission of offenses. Crime detection is classified into three phases. First, the discovery that a crime has been committed. Second, the process of investigation, including the identification of a suspect or suspects. And thirdly, the collection of evidence to indict the suspect before the court. In an era of digital transformation, we find ourselves at a critical juncture. The interplay between law and technology holds immense potential to shape the course of crime detection at all the three phases and going beyond it in addressing wider perspectives in criminal justice reform. The landscape of crime is evolving 
at an unprecedented pace as our world becomes increasingly interconnected through the expansion of digital technologies from cybercrime and digital fraud to the exploitation of emerging technologies for illicit purposes law enforcement agencies like the CBI are faced with new and complex challenges that demand innovative solutions the investigating agencies have to keep up with the radical change in crime in a digitally connected world to solve to solve complex crime patterns I would like to cite the example of the CBI's preliminary inquiry in 2018 into a case surrounding illegally harvested databases and unauthorized acquisition of data these new challenges have become more complex because of three main reasons firstly tracing the misuse of personal data in India within the vast digital ecosystem presents a daunting task that's one of the products of India being one of those countries in the world where data is priced at its cheapest all for the good but it also gives a great deal of scope to the offenders the data could have been disseminated across multiple platforms making it challenging to track its flow and potential impact accurately secondly the techniques employed by cyber criminals such as data encryption and anonymization add layers of complexity to investigation requiring advanced forensic capabilities and specialized expertise thirdly navigating jurisdictional issues and obtaining cooperation from international entities include social including social media platforms and foreign governments might further hinder the efforts of our law enforcement agencies including CBI the global nature of crime necessitates extensive coordination and collaboration with counterparts abroad which could slow down the investigative process the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies are multifaceted the journey of information disclosing a criminal offense can be seen in two stages namely the investigation stage and the trial stage which follows technology is changing the way we conceptualize crime and the criminal at the investigation stage firstly violators of the law now have the ability to form global networks and carry out criminal activities through the instrument of technology a criminal does not any longer function in an isolated silo with a localized crime scene the criminal is not a solo performer or if you like to call them that a solo artist but a part of a complex network of operations spread globally secondly the crime itself may no longer have a situs in the digital sphere criminals may deploy data analytics for commission of fraud or manipulation which is not tethered to any physical scene of the crime third the criminal act is no longer a solitary act which causes damage to the victim of crime in one fell swoop the acts are numerous and no single act can be complete in itself without regard to the totality of the acts which constitute the violation to deal with these innovations in criminal activities India must rethink its investigative framework the practice of allocating a case to an investigating officer and her local team for investigation must be relooked to meet the challenges of sophisticated criminal networks we can do this by completely re-engineering the national response to crime and our approach to criminal investigation by forming multidisciplinary teams consisting of law enforcement officers and domain experts including data analysts these teams would draw from the expertise of their members and refine their investigative work multidisciplinary investigative teams can deploy unique approaches and pattern recognition in a seamless manner over a fluid investigative landscape the CBI can be upgraded by reassessing the challenges of our changing times and by making structural reforms in CBI 
Criminal investigation is, in other words, not just about crime. It needs a robust understanding of new structures of business and finance, together with the evolving challenges to security which are faced by our nation. The legislation of 1963 operates in a radically different world today, both domestically and on a global stage. At the heart of the digital transformation lies the need for a nuanced understanding of the ways in which technology intersects with the legal framework governing our societies. From issues of jurisdiction and privacy to questions of accountability and transparency, the integration of technology into our criminal justice administration requires careful consideration of the ethical, legal and societal implications at play. As we navigate this rapidly evolving landscape, it is essential to recognize the dynamic nature of technology itself. What may be cutting edge today could be obsolete tomorrow, necessitating a flexible and adaptive approach to the integration of technology with the administration of criminal justice. This requires a willingness to embrace emerging technologies. But going beyond it, this requires an institutional commitment to ongoing training and career education to ensure that the law enforcement officers remain equipped to leverage these tools effectively. Under the auspices of the Department of Personal and Training, CBI has undergone significant reforms aimed at enhancing its investigative capabilities. Central to these efforts is the establishment of the Network for Evidence Tracing, Research and Analysis Lab, which is called NETRA, equipped with cutting-edge digital forensic tools and manned by skilled technical and executive staff. NETRA represents a leap forward in CBI's ability to analyze electronic evidence, including mobile, mobile devices, cloud storage, and e-discovery. By developing a pool of skilled digital investigators and leveraging actionable intelligence from electronic footprints, NETRA plays a crucial role in expediting the investigation process and delivering justice swiftly and efficiently. And as head of the Indian judiciary, I would like to compliment these unique initiatives which are being adopted by the, by the Union government and by its dedicated team of domain experts. In the realm of criminal justice, the delicate balance between search and seizure powers and individual privacy rights stands at the cornerstone of a fair and just society. At the heart of this balance lies the need to uphold due process while ensuring the effective functioning of, of law enforcement agencies. Section 94 of the newly enacted Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Samhita 2023 and Section 185 of the Bharatiya Saksha Adhiniyam 2023 grant courts and law enforcement the authority to summon documents and materials, including digital evidence, deemed necessary for investigation, instances of raids conducted, and, inc and incidents of unwarranted confiscation of personal devices, highlight the pressing need to strike a balance between investigative imperatives and individual privacy rights. A petition was filed in the Supreme Court highlighting the absence of well-defined legal frameworks governing the procedures for electronic device searches and seizures. The Supreme Court directed union agencies to adhere to the 2020 CBI Crime Manual on digital evidence until formal guidelines are established. And this was in the Foundation of Media, versus profession, Media Professionals versus Union of India in an interim order of 14th of December 2023 by Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Justice Sudhanshu Dulia. Brother Sudhanshu is part of the audience this evening. The CBI manual, which is framed on the basis of the provisions of the CRPC, provides essential guidelines for CBI's investigative functions, including raids, seizures, and arrests. It emphasizes the importance of scrupulous adherence to established procedures and introduces accountability for deviations. The CBI manual mandates the provision of hash values for confiscated digital devices like mobile phones, 
and laptops during investigation. Hash values akin to electronic fingerprints are generated under the Information Technology Act to safeguard the integrity of seized electronic devices. Additionally, the manual mandates the creation of an image of seized electronic documents at the time of seizure, further safeguarding against tampering or manipulation. The new criminal laws recently enacted by Parliament encompass substantive crime, procedure and evidence. These laws aim at digitizing various aspects of criminal procedure. This is a significant step towards modernizing the justice system. From the initial registration of a first information report to the final delivery of judgment, every stage of a criminal investigation is slated to be recorded digitally under the purview of the proposed legislation. This comprehensive approach ensures a seamless flow of information and is intended to facilitate better coordination and collaboration among stakeholders involved in the investigative and adjudicatory processes. Summons can now be issued electronically. Testimonies from witnesses, experts, accused individuals and other parties may also be presented virtually. This innovation eliminates the need for physical documentation and enables swift communication between law enforcement agencies, courts and individuals involved in legal proceedings. It will obviate the delay in bail orders reaching the jail authorities and in recording witness depositions. Similarly, the authorization for presenting testimonies virtually opens up new avenues for participation in legal proceedings, allowing contributions to the process from remote locations. So the new law then creates new facilities and possibilities for the use of technology for recording evidence through video conferencing as and when possible. Section 296 of the CRPC, which is similar to Section 332 of the Bharatiya Nagarik Suksha, Suraksha Samhita, provides for the recording of evidence on formal character on affidavit. Section 330 of the Samhita provides that no formal proof of certain documents is required if the genuineness of the documents is not disputed and that such documents may be read in evidence. So the new criminal laws which have been enacted by Parliament now provide both a challenge and an opportunity. And I think it is important that all arms of the Criminal Justice Administration, the law enforcement agencies, uh, the courts and all other stakeholders, including the forensic science labs, must collaborate together by holding training programs so that we understand and appreciate the problems which we face and the challenges which we have to confront. Undoubtedly, the imperative to digitize criminal processes received serious attention by events such as the COVID-19 pandemic. The global health crisis served as a stark reminder of the necessity to ensure seamless connectivity within the Criminal Justice Administration, prompting the widespread adoption of virtual courts and e-registries. However, as we embark on a digital transformation, two significant concerns come to light. Firstly, while complete digitization promises increased efficiency and accessibility, it also runs the risk of excluding individuals without internet access or technological proficiency, which remains a significant power portion of India's population. Thus, there is a pressing need to ensure that the benefits of digitization are equitably distributed and that mechanisms are in place to address the digital divide. Secondly, particular attention must be paid to the digitalization of foundational processes, such as the filing of FIRs, to streamline and trace back the sequence of events and enhance transparency from the outset. Criminal investigations must be synchronized with court procedures for effective and time-bound prosecutions. To prosecute or defend in a CBI case is no easy task. Because of the nature of the investigation undertaken by the CBI, the record and documentary evidence is bulky and complicated. 
Many scientific and field-specific expert witnesses require scrutiny. The number of oral witnesses cited by the prosecution often run into triple digits. The nature of crime may also require close scrutiny of the functioning of a government department or a specialized field. This leaves the courts with a Herculean task of decomplification, decomplexification of the case and ensuring that the parameters of the law are followed to dispense justice. In a lighter vein, a common problem which is expressed by judges who are in charge of CBI cases and courts is that when they are selected to head CBI courts, the best amongst the lot are assigned to CBI courts because the cases are so sensitive. But because of the slow nature of the disposal, most of the judges or many of the judges who are assigned CBI courts fall down in comparison with the rate of disposal of their peers in other parts of the judiciary. As a result of which begins then the process of submitting representation when their own career advancements are in issue. Another problem which is faced by our courts is that the special courts which are created to man CBI cases are really just new avatars of existing courts. When we seek to create special courts for CBI cases or for that matter other new legislation which is being increasingly enacted by parliament, we must truly set up new courts, technologically efficient courts and not just try and convert existing infrastructure to fill a new label. That will be really the challenge which we have to face if we have to change the whole face of the administration of criminal justice. The challenge now lies in disposing of CBI cases in a time-bound manner, despite the enormous challenges of complexification, pendency, and the examination of witnesses. This is because, first, the Premium Investigation Agency deals with crimes which impact the national economic health. Their speedy disposal is imperative for maintaining public confidence and preventing corruption in public life. Second, the accused in CBI cases are charged with serious violations of the law. The justice delivery mechanism must be swift. The life of the accused is altered and their reputation is also significantly hurt when they are accused of an offence. Delays in the disposal of cases therefore become a significant impediment in the process of justice delivery. Delay in prosecutions is one of the common and grave concerns of the justice delivery mechanism. Anyone acquainted with court procedures would acknowledge that the examination of witnesses in a criminal trial is a time-consuming process. Delays in examination lead to derailment of the trial. Expert witnesses may need to unwrap the working of a scientific process or the inner workings of the process in which corruption is alleged, which is also time-consuming. The need of the hour is to recognize the complexity of CBI prosecutions and to leverage technology to avoid delays. Our challenges today and tomorrow require an institutional commitment, a commitment which requires dedicated finance to upgrade infrastructure, synergies between different wings of the criminal justice administration, and calibrated strategies to train all the personnel to understand the rapid changes in the environment. A multi-pronged approach must be adopted to integrate technology with court procedures to obviate the delays caused in CBI prosecutions. This would ensure that the severity of the accusation coupled with excessive delays in CBI courts does not translate to a presumption of guilt. In preparation of this lecture, I thought that the best inputs which I could get would be from some of our district judges who have presided over CBI courts. And I thought I'd just have an informal conversation with them. One little input which I got from a senior district judge was that the cases before him spanned a whole spectrum from rupees 300 to rupees 1 crore. And he says, I asked the special prosecutor that is rupees 300 really worth the CBI contesting the litigation? And the answer was, well, 300 was what came to light. And usually speaking, the crime comes to light only when a deed is not completed or the demand has not been met. But I think it's important for us, both in the context of not just streamlining the courts,
but also promoting the efficiency of the CBI as an investigative agency to pick our battles. I think we have perhaps been spreading our investigative agencies too thin over the years, despite the rapid change in the environment. Our premier investigative agencies must concentrate their attention and efforts on that class of crime which truly threatens the security of the nation, public order, or the economic health of the nation. Allowing our investigative agencies to spread themselves too thin would really pose a serious challenge to the personnel who man the agencies because the number of personnel is obviously limited. So many of the officers who work in the CBI, as the director was telling me, come on deputation. The force consists largely of officers on deputation. Many of the problems which I have highlighted can be resolved by creating a natively digital environment from investigation to witness examination and final disposal. From the inception of the case in the form of an FIR, we must imagine the role of technology in facilitating speedy and fair trials. For example, when an FIR is registered, the case eventually proceeds to trial. It is difficult to access the general diary of the case because the diaries are weeded out every 10 years. Therefore, the FIR and the general diary must be sent to the court in electronic formats at the very outset. Similarly, a digital certified copy of the relevant case diary and the documents which are required to be provided to the accused under Section 207 of the CRPC can be sent to the court and the accused respectively. Some of the measures are as simple as allowing witnesses and stakeholders to appear before the court virtually. This will not only create a friendly and accessible environment for examination, but will also avoid delays due to the non-appearance of witnesses. Videography of relevant procedures of investigation can also be done, which would later be used as evidence during the trial. It would be beneficial for the prosecution, the accused, and also for the court administration to ascertain the actual sequence of events related to any investigative procedure. A virtual court model has recently been developed by the E-Committee of the Supreme Court. Once it is deployed on a pilot basis, it will enable the simultaneous conversion of speech into text, thereby reducing the time spent in recording evidence and transcribing judicial orders. A mobile application could be designed with predefined timelines corresponding to different stages of investigation or trial. This app would serve as a platform for all stakeholders involved in a case, facilitating communication and coordination. Additionally, it should include an alert system to notify relevant parties when approaching deadlines are imminent. The urgency for innovative solutions in bolstering our criminal justice system cannot be overstated today. Advanced data analytics serve as a prime example of how technology enables law enforcement agencies to navigate through vast amounts of information, uncovering patterns and connections that might otherwise remain concealed. For instance, in a case of financial fraud, investigators utilized predictive analytics to analyze transaction data from multiple sources. By identifying irregularities and suspicious patterns in financial transactions, authorities are able to proactively intervene and prevent further fraudulent activities. This not only saves valuable resources, but also mitigates potential losses for victims. Moreover, cutting-edge forensic techniques offer unprecedented capabilities in the analysis and interpretation of physical and digital evidence. In homicide investigations, forensic experts, for instance in the US, have utilized advanced DNA analysis techniques to match genetic material found at the crime scene with a suspect. Similarly, in cases involving cybercrime, cyber forensic specialists employ sophisticated tools and methodologies to trace digital footprints, uncovering crucial evidence stored on electronic devices or in digital databases. Artificial intelligence stands out as a game changer in revolutionizing criminal investigation. By leveraging AI algorithms, law enforcement agencies like the CBI 
can analyze vast amounts of data rapidly, identifying trends, anomalies, and potential leads with unprecedented accuracy. For example, in a human trafficking case, AI-powered algorithms analyze social media data to identify patterns of suspicious behavior and communication among potential perpetrators. An identification tool has empowered law enforcement to identify more than 17,000 children who have fallen victim to sex trafficking, resulting in a 63% reduction in investigation time. This not only expedited the investigation process, but also helped law enforcement agencies dismantle trafficking networks and rescue victims. By leveraging AI technology, law enforcement was able to sift through vast amounts of data quickly and efficiently, pinpointing critical leads and actionable intelligence that might have otherwise gone unnoticed. AI aids in the decomplification of crimes, breaking down intricate cases into manageable components for analysis and resolution. This reminds me of a scene in the movie titled Minority Report, where AI is depicted as a tool for predicting future crimes, allowing law enforcement to intervene before they occur. In this futuristic society, the pre-crime unit utilizes a trio of psychics known as precogs to foresee crimes before they even happen. These visions of future crime are then analyzed by sophisticated AI algorithms which determine the likelihood and location of each predicted offense. However, we must acknowledge that artificial intelligence is not free of prejudice and bias. Because of skewed data, AI may lead to community-based profiling of marginalized social groups as having a greater predictability towards crime. This may not only abuse the privacy rights of individuals, but also lead to disproportionate targeting of social groups. AI is a gift which must only be wielded with ethical boundaries. While this portrayal may seem like pure science fiction, it reflects real-world efforts in predictive policing. Across various jurisdictions worldwide, law enforcement agencies are harnessing the power of AI and data analytics to forecast criminal activity and allocate resources. In embracing the capabilities of technology, we reaffirm our commitment to the principles of fairness, equity, and accountability. By leveraging these tools responsibly and ethically, we ensure that the benefits of technological advancement reach all members of society, regardless of their background or circumstance. However, it is imperative to prioritize ethical considerations in the utilization of these technologies as well. Clear guidelines and safeguards must be established to prevent misuse or abuse of AI and other advanced technologies, safeguard privacy rights, and address biases that may inadvertently arise. By doing so, we can build trust and confidence among stakeholders and uphold the integrity of our justice system. The trajectory of the CBI from its inception to its present stature is punctuated by significant milestones and transformative reforms aimed at fortifying its investigative capabilities and cementing its position as a premier investigative agency, leveraging advanced data analytics, cutting edge forensic methodologies, and artificial intelligence offers unprecedented opportunities to bolster crime detection, investigation, and prosecution. However, this digital transformation must be independent by robust safeguards to protect individual rights, promote transparency, and mitigate the potential risks of technological misuse or abuse. I'm confident that by creating a natively digital environment from conception, we can significantly reduce case pendency and ensure citizen-centric justice. I am deeply thankful to the director for having invited me and to all of you for this very patient hearing. Thank you. Namaskar.